Hello guys, welcome to the third lesson of the CSS Grid Bite Size Tutorial and in this lesson we will be learning the properties of the grid items or sometimes referred to as child elements. Alright guys, so as I mentioned in the first video of this tutorial, understanding grid lines is a really good way of understanding how the grid system operates. So using grid lines we can affect the behaviour of grid items and give them power to span into other grid cells and this could be horizontally using grid column start or grid column end or this could be vertically using grid row start or grid row end and we can even combine the two to create some really nice looking layouts. So what I'm going to do is number these lines and this is going to really help us visually understand how the grid lines work. So let's first look at spanning things horizontally onto other columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to span item 1 into the second column. So the way we do that is we'll go into item 1, or the ID of item 1, and we write in grid column start. And now the value we put in here is the first line we want it to start on, and I want it to stay here, so it's already on the first line, so I'll just put in 1, and nothing happens because it's already on grid line 1. Now this is when grid lines can get a bit confusing for people. Some people may think you end on the second grid line because you want to span across 2, but if you look on the browser here, item 1 already ends on the second line. So for us to span on another column, we need to end it on the third grid line. So if you go in here and write grid column end and put in 3, you can see now it starts at the first line and ends on the third line. And now we're spanning across two columns horizontally, which is what we want. So now let's look at spanning items into other rows. So I'm going to span item 3 into the third row. So we're going to go into the item with the idea 3 and first thing we need to do is similar to grid column start but instead it will be grid row start and it's already starting on the second line so this will be the first line of the row we don't want it up here into the first row we want it to start on the second row so it's already starting on the second row line or second grid line so we put 2 here and nothing will happen because it's already at the start of the second grid line now we want it to span onto the third row but for it to do that it needs to end on the fourth line which is here not the third line because it's already ending on the third line so let's go then here and write grid row end oh. and we say four and there you go now you see it's spanning across two rows so the second and third row and that's exactly what we wanted so now we can actually combine these two properties and span our items both in columns and in rows so let's stick with grid item 1 here and let's just say we want it to span into the second column so this column here so the way we do that is we'll go in here and we we'll write grid column start now it's already starting on the first line here so just grab one and nothing happens because it's, again it's already on the first line and then we go underneath here and we write grid column end and then we write in here so it's not going to be the second line because it's already finishing on the second line so it's going to be on the third line because we want it to span onto the second column so in here we give it a value of three and there you go now it's spanning across two columns and it's also spanning across two rows now combining the two properties we can actually place our items in completely different locations so let's just say we wanted item five here to be where item one usually is so what i'm going to do is quickly comment item one out so it just goes back to normal and what we want is grid item 5 to be where grid item 1 is. So we go into grid item 5. First we want to find which grid line we want to start on and which column we want to start on. So we go on grid column start. You can see grid item 1 starts on the first grid line. So we're just going to press 1 here. And now you can see that grid item 5 is in line with grid item 1. Now we want grid item 5 to end on the second line just like grid item 1 does. So we do the same thing here. So grid column end. And we'll say 2 and there you go now it's staying in the first column so now what we need to do is define the rows so we're going to put in grid row start now you can see that grid item 1 starts on the first row so we need to press 1 and then just to secure it we'll put the grid I grid row end we'll put it on 2 and now grid item 5 is where grid item 1 used to be and there you go guys we've combined the two properties and now we completely change the position of an individual item and placed it in another grid cell and just goes to show the power of CSS grid so like many CSS properties we have shorthand for these properties um, so what I'm going to do actually is just comment out item 5 so item 1 goes back to its normal position and then I'm going to uncomment this and the shorthand for this if we wanted, to if we wanted this outcome again we'll just use grid column 
and then the first value is where we want it to start so it's at 1 and then the second value is where we want it to end and there you go we have the exact same outcome with that shorthand and then we can do the same for this one so grid column and we want it to start on 1 and we want it to end on 3 and then we can do the same with grid row so grid row start on the second end on the fourth oh. And there you go, we have the exact same outcome as we did before, just much quicker and shorter. Now there is another way we can actually lay this all out. And you may have noticed that I've been using the word span quite a lot. And with CSS grid, you can quite literally use that word to describe how many grid cells you want your items to span across. So using grid column and grid row again, what I'm going to do is use item one as an example. So the first value we put in here would be one again, because we want it to start at one. And instead of defining what grid line we want to put it in, we can just say how many grid cells we want it to span. So we want it to span two grid cells, so we put in span two, and there you go, we get the same desired effect. And then we can do the same thing here, so let's just do it with rows. So we want it to start on the second row, but we want it to span into the third row. So we just put span two, and there you go, and essentially what we've done here is just take away the confusion of grid lines, but either way it works perfectly fine, it's just dependent on personal preferences. The next property we're going to be looking at guys is the alignment properties. Alright guys, so to demonstrate how the alignment properties work for child elements of the grid, I'm going to use the dev tools like I did in the previous video, just so we can visually see how they look. So like we saw in the previous video, we saw that we could align the content within our grid cells, horizontally and vertically, and then we could also align the whole grid container itself. But when we were aligning our content, it aligned all our content within the grid cells, but grid gives you the power to align your content individually within each grid cell. So what I'm going to do is use item 1 to demonstrate, so I'm inside item 1 here, and the way we align things horizontally is using the justify self property. Now this has four values, so we've got start, and you can see now the content inside the first grid cell is the only one aligning at the start of the grid cell, whereas all the others are still stretched. Now you've also got end, which will put it at the end, and then you've got center which will put the item in the center and then the default uh, which is stretch if you just want to put it back to normal but I'm going to keep this one center and now let's look at aligning things vertically so I'm going to use grid item 3 for this so it's a similar sort of thing here so instead of justify self it's align self and this will manipulate the content vertically so again similar to justify self you've got start and you can see now the content is lined at the start of the grid cell and then you've also got end which is at the bottom and then you've got center which will align the content in the middle of the grid cell and we have one more property which combines align self and justify self and that's the place self property so I'm going to demonstrate this in grid item 5 so first we put in place self and the first value in here is the align self so let's just say we want this in the center so we want our item to be in the center vertically and then the second value is justify self so let's just stretch this and there you go so vertically it's in the middle but horizontally it's stretched but that's it for this lesson guys and I really hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope you learned a lot if you could please hit the like button and please consider subscribing as it really helps the channel grow and I'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to be using the properties we've learned from the previous video and this video and applying it to a practical use